dream for rapid rail gets on track at long last. To get on track means to progress. To progress. Track is, things are progressing well. Things are going according to plan. His holiday plans are on track now that he has enough money. Things are going well. I've got enough money, I can carry on with my holiday plans. Here, we're talking about their starting now they're actually broken, broken ground and starting. At long last means finally. Okay. Ceremony, you know, cake, tea and cakes afterwards and all that sort of stuff. That's breaking ground. What's this? Groundbreaking. It's very important. If something's groundbreaking, it's very important. The invention of the microchip was a groundbreaking event, very important. Of course, from the micro trip, everything else we have is sort of developed. So it's groundbreaking. Started everything off, started everything off. Groundbreaking. But here we're talking about breaking ground. Don't, you might hear this. What's this mean? Breaking wind. Passing gas. Okay. Someone get too much gas in a certain part of your body. This is what happens: breaking wind. Okay, passing gas. Anyway, the mayor has reached a historic point and finally breaking ground on an important project. It's actually underway. And if you live in town, it's going to be chaos for the next couple of years. Okay, because all the construction is going on. It's going to be absolutely chaos. How the Auckland Council and the government propose or plan to, in this case, to propose, have the intention of, he proposes to go to Bali for his holiday. Basically, he plans. It's planning, okay? That's what I intend to do. Not 100% sure yet, but that's my intention. Okay? He proposes to go to, to Bali for his holiday. Uh, how the Auckland Council and the government propose to share the cost of the city's underground rail link, but the fact that the PM and Transport Minister joined Mayor, okay, Mayor Len Brown, for a groundbreaking ceremony this week suggests, indicates, the $2.5 billion project, dollar project is going ahead, is on track. Okay? After so many plans, so much argument, and so much hope, the moment feels truly historic. Okay? So they think it's a great moment for Auckland. Any questions up to there? Mr. Brown believes a central rail circuit, circuit is a loop, okay? Circuit is a loop. Will change the shape of Auckland. Perhaps it will. The loop will allow trains to run much more frequently than they can with all lines terminating at Britain Mart. Terminate means to end. Terminate to end. They terminated his contract because of his bad work habits. Ended his contract. Okay? So to terminate is to end. That's where we get terminal. Airport terminal, that's where the planes end, their journey ends. Hmm? Where is the rail, rail saturated from here to here? I have no idea because quite frankly, I think it's, it's going to, I think the stations are going to be Crane Happy Road, somewhere in Mount Eden and somewhere else. But to be honest, I haven't given it much thought because mm. I haven't been in downtown Auckland for years. Oh, okay. And I, I live out in the suburbs, I, I never go to town. Okay. Very, very rarely. Okay. Uh, but it's going to be, Crane Happy Road is going to be one of them. Mount, somewhere in Mount Eden will be another one. Sort of go around that way, like something like that. Yeah, Oraki. Yeah, uh, through it. Oraki. I don't think Oraki, no. I don't think Oraki. I think, I think it mentions it here. <laughs> no, that's the eastern line, eastern. okay? Uh, no, it's going to, more west Auckland, uh, that Mount Eden, that area around there. That's where it's planning. Okay. okay.
but I don't know because I just not have no intention of using it. No need to. Okay. If the railway works as planners intend or hope it to, it will make Auckland a more compact city. Compact here means close, close. If something's compact. It's small and neat. If it uh, get the imagination, small and neat. Boosting or increasing to boost is to increase. What's a booster seat? Booster seats they give for the kids, small kids to sit on in a restaurant, make so the kid can reach the table. Okay, booster seat, small. You get them on barber, barber lady lady might need it to drive. Yeah, but I don't, do you think a lady's going to sit on a booster seat? I don't think so. I have a little question, though. Yeah? I don't think any lady's going to embarrass herself by sitting on a booster seat, okay? No but when else. I uh, see this lady drive, I cannot even see it. You're, you're not the only one. I see many cars in front of me. I don't see a driver. All, right. All I can see Go is the, the, you know, the, the, the seat thing of the seats. Now, who's driving that car? Okay, of course, usually it's small, generally probably an Asian lady, small, and you can't see a thing. Okay, and I've seen some ladies going the other way that their head's just above yeah. the the, um, uh, the dashboard, oh. only just, you know. So, <laughs> that's why I mean, they that's a booster. Need to use booster seats. <laughs> These booster seats, okay? Yeah. okay. But here, talking about increasing its central business district. Uh, and attracting more dense development around the three railway lines radiating from it. Radiating means going out from. All roads radiate from the city, spread out from the city. You've got the city, and all the roads are going out like that. Okay? Spread out. The idea of spreading out. A radiant smile on a face. What kind of smile? Nice smile. Yeah, very, Shiny. very happy, bright smile. Okay? You can see her happiness on her smile. Okay? So, um, more dense development. What do you mean by more dense development? Yeah. Well, people go to railway stations, okay? What is, when they're at the railway station, they want something to eat, they want something to drink. Maybe buy a magazine, mm -hmm. maybe buy some flowers. Mm -hmm. So, you, put up, you set up a railway station, and the next thing you know, all these people move in to cater for the customers, mm -hmm. the travellers. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how cities have started. They start railway track down, town springs up around the track. And that's just normal, okay? Suburban stations, suburban stations, suburbs. We all live in the suburbs here, I think, okay? Suburbs. Suburban stations will become hubs of activity. What's a hub? A central point. Hub is a central point. Street is the hub of Auckland. Everything sort of goes out from Queen Street. Okay? But airports have hubs too. What do I mean by a hub airport? Hub airport is the airport where the airline carrier has its main office. Okay? Each they fly to different airports, but they have one airport that's their main central airport where a company is, the businesses are, the business offices are. So a hub is the central point. What's that? Hub cap. You've all got one? You've all got one? You've got four of them actually. They cover the wheels. They're on the wheels of your car. Oh. The thing, you've got the tyre, then you've got the central part. That's called the hub cap. You can take them off. And they do take them off to check the brakes and stuff like that. Okay, so it's called a hub cap. Why? It's the centre part of the wheel. Centre part of the wheel. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm wondering what's that called in Korean? Oh. Hub cap. <laughs> hub cap, probably. <laughs> in Japanese, probably hub cap too. Okay. Okay, so suburban stations will become hubs of activity, centres of activity. 
with local bus routes oriented to rail connections. Oriented means aimed at, basically. Okay. Centered of well, aimed at. To it, okay, drawn to it. So here the bus routes will be based on the different stations to pick people up, drop people off at the stations. Oriented. We got this board here. Anyone ever heard of this? Orienteering. Anyone ever done it? Okay. They give you a map and a compass and you run. They said they've set out different uh, checkpoints and you have to run cross country and get to the checkpoint, check in, and move on to the next checkpoint. So you're drawn towards the finish. Okay? It's a very popular sport. A very popular athletic sport, orienteering. Okay? Quite common here in New Zealand. But here we're talking about local bus routes aimed at railway connections and with the ease of transfer on a prepaid card. Okay? Um, Auckland commuters will take to public transport at last. Commuter? Who's a commuter? You guys are one. It's a person who goes to and from a place of employment, like a worker. You work in the morning, so you drive from your home to your work. Do your work and then drive home again. That's commute. He commutes to the city every day. So every day he gets in his car, drives to work, comes home. Does the same thing in reverse. That's why we have rush hours, traffic jams, commuters. Okay? The person that does it is a commuter. The governor commuted the death sentence. What happened here? We don't, it wouldn't affect us because we don't have the death penalty, mm -hmm. but it happens in America mm -hmm. and some other countries. What happens? The governor has the authority. He can say, we will not execute this man. We will just give him life jail. Okay? Mm -hmm. So commute here means stop an execution. Mm -hmm. In America, the governors of each state have the authority to do that. Okay? If they feel that enough evidence has been presented, well, they don't free the guy, he just gets a life sentence instead of death. Okay? But commute also has that meaning as well. To stop a death and execution. Legally stop an execution. Okay? But here we're talking about commuters. Do you think people are going to leave their cars for these trains? What do you think? Opinions? <laughs> Some on. train station, they have a spot. People leave, park the car there and then take the train. Park and drive, yeah. yeah. And it, they were talking about charging people for that, okay? Oh. But it's, there was an uproar and said they're not going to do it. But, I mean, in general, do you think someone's going to say, well, I'll leave my car at home and I'll catch the train to work? You mm -hmm. think so? Yeah, if there is a big car park at the station, train station. <laughs> they yeah. might, yeah. yeah. Some, some do. Mm -hmm. the, the one in Glen Innes is usually full. The one at Iraqi is generally full. So people do use it. But most people love their cars. People love the car. Why do they love the car? There's no timetable. You can get in the car and go anywhere you want, anytime you like. Okay? So... Trains tend to stick to timetables. Sometimes they're late. Sometimes, sometimes, most times they're late. Okay? So people, there's doubt whether people will do that. But if you live in the central part of the city where this is going to be, it makes it easier. Yeah, they don't even need a car. Yeah, well, yeah, you won't. You won't. You could walk to work. You know, if you live in, this, in Queen Street around that area, most people walk to work. They don't drive a car. Uh, if I go to town, I take the train. I'm going to take my car to town. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, no. Okay? So, we'll see. Okay? But it's going to take years for this to be done, so we don't know. Forsaking the cars. To forsake? To give up. Forsake. To give up. He's forsaken alcohol. 
giving up alcohol, no more boozing, okay? There's a song called Don't Forsake Me, Oh My Darling, okay? Don't Leave Me, Oh My Dear, okay? But the idea of to give up, forsaking their cars, giving up their cars, and consigning road congestion to the past. What do I mean by consigning to the past? Consigning is to assign something. Okay? So consigning to the past is making it past history. Okay? Many old, old f trends have been consigned to the past. Everyone, everyone remember the hula hoop? Okay, the hula hoop? That's gone. I'll never see those again, okay? They'd be consigned to the past. They came, they were popular for a while, then they died, like most fans, okay? So it's the idea of people and road congestion, there'll be no more road congestion, everyone's going to get on trains. Do you believe that? I don't for a moment, okay? For some people. But that's what the plan is. Get people out of the cars, into the trains and the buses, okay? That's the general plan. Whether it works or not, we shall see, said the blind man. Okay, all of that might have happened. So this railway deal might have happened a long time ago. Post-war means after the war. Okay, post means after. So post-war is after the war. Planners had focused or concentrated on railways rather than motorways and the harbour bridge. Okay, so they're saying, well... If they decided to build trains, uh, set up train tracks and stuff, instead of harbour bridges and roads, we would have had it already. Okay? It might still have happened if the bridge had been built to earlier designs for trains as wheeled traffic. A lot of bridges around the world, trains, you've got the, you've got the road on top and then underneath you've got the train. Train tracks, a lot of bridges are like that in Europe. In America too, you've got train goes on the bottom level, cars on the top level. We don't have that here. Okay. Uh, as well as wheel traffic, but then as now governments were hard to convince, and the bridge had to be financed by traffic tolls. Okay, you all know what a toll is. Okay. I'm sorry, last the minute, the bridge had to be financed by traffic tolls, last the minute. The bridge had to be paid traffic tolls. You had to pay a toll, a fee, to go over the bridge. Mm. I remember very well. It wasn't much, okay, but it was a toll. They had a booth there, you drove up, put your money in, and drove across, okay? Toll is a fee. Uh, 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 I'm asking you again, what's the meaning government were hard to convince about that? Why? Government was hard to convince, money probably, many, many different factors. Remember this was in the, the bridge was built in the 19, started in the 50s, finished in the 60s. Mm -hmm. not, a lot of, not a lot of money floating around those days. Mm -hmm. So governments were very um, careful with how they spent their money. So building a bridge, maybe that had a railway or building a railway system, very expensive. Mm -hmm. So government, I, I would say finance would be the major problem. Money mm -hmm. would be the major, mm -hmm. especially just after the war. Countries mm -hmm. broke, mm -hmm. many countries broke, okay? So they built the Harbour Bridge and they paid for it by a toll. Mm -hmm. And they paid for it in half the time. So the bridge had not been financed by traffic toll means there is no toll fee. There was no toll fee. Yeah. There was in the beginning. Yeah. Then there was, a, there was a toll fee. You had to pay a toll. But that fee, so many people used a bridge so often that they got enough money from the toll fees to pay for the bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, that's the way it works, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, they, then when when the gut when they paid off the bridge, stopped the tolls. Uh -huh. No more tolls. Uh -huh. You live on the North Shore, right? Yeah. You don't pay a toll. Uh -huh. But if you lived on the North Shore thirty years ago, forty years ago, you'd pay a toll coming across. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, so because so many people, and that's it, people were attracted by the bridge, made made a. 
before you had to go all the way around, all the way around to get to the North Shore. The bridge straight over the harbour, 10 minute trip, 5 minute trip. So it was used a lot. And they gained a lot of money quickly, so they paid for it very quickly. Paid for it very quickly. Okay? But they still had to add to it because of the volume of traffic. So the bridge was paid for by the people using it, the tolls. Okay? So if they have another bridge. There's, the there's talk about they having another toll. bridge, sure, and then charging tolls on it the same way they did the first one. I don't know if that'll ever turn up another bridge. Where would they have it? Uh, they're suggesting over to Devonport or somewhere like that, that area there, mm -hmm. North Head. Okay, uh, I'll probably never see it in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So, everyone, okay up to now. Okay. Uh, right. Aucklanders readily pay them. Readily means quite happily. Okay, I don't mind. If I'm going to cross the bridge, I'll pay the toll. Okay, so readily here means happily in agreement, not arguing. Happily, agreeably, okay, readily. If you do something readily, you don't hesitate. You're willing to help. You're willing to help. He readily helped his mum do the dishes. Instead of arguing and fighting, Oh yeah, okay, here I come, Mum. Help to do the dishes. Okay? Your kids help you with the dishes? No. <laughs> they eat off them, but they don't want to clean them, right? Right. Okay. Um, so, Falklanders readily paid the tolls, um, crossing the bridge in such numbers that its capacity, the number of cars, that the size of the bridge here had to be doubled within a few years of its open. When the bridge was first open, it was four lanes. Two that way and two that way. That's the set, that was the bridge. Then so much traffic, so many people use it, they got these. On clip-ons. We travel on them every day. They added Two more lanes here, two more lanes here. But they were made in Japan. They were made in Japan. The, the extra lanes were made in Japan and shipped out from Japan to New Zealand. Oh. That's why they called them Nippon Clip-Ons, because they were built in Japan. Put on barges, shipped to New Zealand, then attached, clipped on or attached to these mm -hmm. other lanes here. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the two outside lanes on each side of the bridge, and they're not going to pass. Is it safe? Hmm? Safe? No one's falling down here, <laughs> okay? Uh, yeah, so that's what they call them, the Nippon clip-ons. So the original bridge, traffic was so much traffic, couldn't they couldn't handle it. So they just had to double it in size. And, and then the, the three-way, four-way, so it changes. Middle rail, the big trailer, things move. Oh, yeah, that's, that, no, that's, 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 done to, that's done for rush hour traffic. Right. That's done for rush hour traffic. Open up more lanes for people going from the city back to the North Shore. Give three lanes as opposed to two that's lanes. Right. And it's the opposite in the morning. People coming from the shore to here, they do the same thing. That's, that's normal traffic management practice. You see, it's quite good the way the machines go along and do it. It's quite interesting. But if you hear people talking about this, that's what they're talking about. The two extra, the bridge has got four lanes each side. So two of them, the outside two, are from just clipped on, added on, attached to them. Okay? The on clip ons. Now they're talking about building, you've got the bridge, and they're talking about building that skywalk underneath it. Bike riders can, pedestrians can cross the bridge. To me, that's going to be a disaster. Wow, that's dangerous. They're, they're mixing pedestrians with bike riders, okay? And you know what's going to happen. You get a whole lot of people going to be crossing the bridge on foot. Then you've got bike riders trying to cross the bridge on foot in the yes. same area. And you know what's going to happen, okay? To me, it's a disaster waiting to happen. I might fall onto the... Well, no, it's going to be 
going to be enclosed glass glass enclosures but I'd be very I wouldn't, I wouldn't walk on it quite frankly okay not so much because I feel it would fall into the water but because you've got to share it with bike riders and these guys bike riders some of them are okay. they're pretty hardcore okay and I can see see kids getting running into bikes and all this sort of stuff it's a bad idea to mix bike riders and pedestrians in a narrow construction. It's only going to be about as wide as this room here, not much bigger. So you imagine mum and dad with two or three kids and bike riders charging up and down. It's going to be chaos, okay? But that's the plan. That's the plan, okay? Anyway, so they had to double the capacity or the size of the bridge. Meanwhile, motorways to the south and west became far more popular commuting arteries or uh, lanes or ways okay, than the railways beside them. People preferred the road. They didn't want to take the train. They preferred to get in the cars and get on the road. The causeway to the Teatatu shape reshaped the west. What's the causeway? Anyone live out Henderson Way or Newland or all that, all that way? Northwest Motorway. Anyone travel on the Northwest Motorway? Uh, mm -hmm. That's to that's White the causeway. Hackery. Yeah, to White Hackery. To well, White Hackery. Because it's it's a road. They filled in that part of the bay, the estuary, and filled in built a road on it. And it's it's not a bridge. It's just earth has been put there. A road's been built on top of that. A motorway's been built on top of that. So it's like a, a land bridge, not a, over the bridge, but just a connecting road. Mm -hmm. Sort of like this, just go straight like that. It's a causeway. There's one joining Singapore to, to Malaysia, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, causeway. Northwest Motorway is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Highway 12, I think it is, or something. It reshaped the west because it made access to the Waitakeries easier, a lot easier. Okay? Instead of having to go all the way around. Any questions up till now? So it's probably too much to expect the long awaited, been waiting for it for a long time, central rail link to change the face of Auckland. It's not going to do it in a hurry. It's going to take years to build and then it's got to gather momentum as people get used to using it. So it's going to be years. Okay? The city's beaches coastal attractions, okay, and bay suburbs, Mission Bay, Okaho Bay, all those bays, okay, will remain more readily reachable by road, and that's true. There's no trains to go near them, so people are going to get in the car on summer's day and drive down to the beach. And outside peak hours at least, peak hours are the rush hours, morning and afternoon and when school gets out, Okay, near the, the congestion hours, peak hours at least, the convenience and privacy of the personal car will be hard to beat. People are going to get in their cars and they're going to go out. They're not going to worry, try and worry about trains. Okay? They may do it. That's why here in Auckland, buses are very good during the day, but after about 5 o'clock they disappear. Okay? And... <laughs> Well, they disappear, but they, they become <laughs> longer and longer to wait for them, okay? During the day, they're quite busy because there's a lot of people moving, people That's to true. and from work. But once everyone's sort of about 5, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you can forget about wait hours for a bus because they basically go onto their long schedule, long timetable, okay? When I was in Japan, there was buses every 10 minutes, almost 24 hours a day. Great, I left my car at home. I never used my car during, when I was working during the week, I used the car only on the weekend. Catch a bus any time. Here, I tried to for the first couple of years when I came back. And after waiting two hours for a bus on Sunday, I said, forget it, and bought a car. Okay? And that's what a lot of other people have done. Okay? okay, so the privacy of the personal car. It's your car. You can do what you like inside it. Okay? Will be hard for public, public transport to be. Who wants to stand around in an open bus shelter in the rain waiting for a bus that may or may not show up on schedule? 
when you can hop in your car, turn the heater on, put some music on, and you're free. Okay? Not many people are going to do that. The only people that do are those that have to. Okay? But the city's population is growing at such a rate that roads and motorways would not be enough for its transport needs. And that's true. More and more people coming in here. That means more and more cars. That means more roads, but the roads all all the roads lead to city, so it doesn't matter how many roads you build, you're still going to have that congestion problem. Okay. Fortunately, the new population is more accustomed to apartment living and urban rail services. And that's a big change. Uh, most people from well, from Asia live in apartments. Okay. Most Kiwis don't. Kiwi likes their quarter acre with the house on it. But that's changing. That's changing. And you can see that in the houses they're building. Big, long, terrace-type house apartment blocks. Terrible things. But people are living in them. Okay? Well, they can't afford a house. That's mm -hmm. one of the reasons. So, Kiwi lifestyles have changed. Okay? They move, they're starting to move, especially the younger ones, and some of the retirees, selling their houses and moving to apartments. They don't have to worry about upkeep. Don't have to worry about mowing the lawn, doing all that sort of stuff. It's all done. And urban rail, that's the, the rail service that serves the city. Okay? What's patronage? Patronage. It's the people that use something, use a facility. Okay? Public use of the rail system has increased. Patronage is... Well, who's a patron? Someone who usually goes to the same shop a lot, okay? A regular customer, you could say. I'm a patron of bookshops. I go to bookshops a lot, okay? So if you go to the beauty salon, yeah, uh, you're a patron. A little bit of a difference, okay? Customer comes in, buys something, probably never comes back. But a patron goes in there again and again and again. Okay? Restaurants, you go to the same restaurants you like all the time, so you're a patron of that restaurant. It also has another meaning. Um, he thanked his patron for his help. Patron in this sense is a backer or supporter. You often hear the patron of the arts. What's that mean? Patron of the arts. You go to all the, the concerts, you go to all the you know, exhibits, art exhibits. You enjoy the arts. You enjoy the arts. Plus, you sometimes support them financially, maybe help them out when they need it. You love the arts, basically. So if you're a patron of something, you enjoy being part of it. Enjoy being part of it patron of the arts, enjoys moving in the art world. Now, arts just doesn't mean pictures. It means concerts and musicals and all that sort of stuff. Not just uh, looking at pictures, okay? So Fine arts. Hmm? Fine arts. Fine arts. The university. Yeah. The degree in fine arts. What's that? Okay. Uh, fine arts. Yeah, music and stuff like that, okay? Uh, they don't get you very far, degrees in fine arts. Okay? So patronage or public use has been rising for several years and the lines have been electrified and new trains provided. We've got the flash new trains and the lines are all electrified so they can move along at a good speed. Okay? Railing's new station under Albert Street and K Road. We all know K Road, right? Mm -hmm. Notorious K Road. Mm -hmm. Okay, turned out to be as expansive. Expansive here means as big, as big as they plan. Expansive, okay, and attractive as the artists' impressions. You know, the architects draw up these designs with beautiful trees and all that sort of stuff. They turn out to be actually like that. Okay, uh, they will bring a new dimensional atmosphere to the CBD, the Central Business District. 
as well as many more people. And that's true. If you've got a nice design station, people are going to go there. They don't want some hole in the wall that looks dull and dirty and stuff like that. They'll go to some beautiful, artistically really nice design place. Okay? Maybe a small park for the kids, something like that. But effective urban rail services need not uh, need to be not only frequent but fast and the main thing reliable okay people don't want to wait don't want to catch the 10 o'clock train at 11 o'clock they want to catch it at 10 o'clock okay and unfortunately urban rail while it's good it's still not 100 percent reliable okay uh, and that's why a lot of people still use the cars and that's certainly why a lot of people try not to use the buses Okay. It will require more than a turning circle. What do I mean by a turning circle? Anybody? Okay, we all know a train, great big long mechanical machine, right? Can they turn like a car can? Can a train do a U-turn in the street here? No. So what it does, it gets on a, it's on a circle with tracks on it. The train comes on the tracks then the circle moves around and it turns the train around. The circle moves, okay, and the tracks go with it and the train was pointed that way by the time the circle has gone around it's painted that way. Okay, that's how they turn the trains around. That's the turning circle they're talking here. It's a method of turning trains around. Pointing them south instead of north, east instead of west. All the major stations had them, and I'm sure we got them. Well, we don't have them here, I don't think, because the trains, a lot of the trains now, drivers at both ends, okay? Uh, that's, so they, they come into the station, driver gets out, walks up here, and they go that way, okay? But the turning circle is where they use that mechanical thing they use to turn a train around, okay? Uh, it'll take more than a turning circle to make Auckland's rail service fast and reliable. Okay? The western line is made slow by level crossings of roads. What do I mean by level crossings? Where the train track goes across the road or the road goes across the train track. Okay? That's where they got the, the signals and the barriers, or some don't have barriers. Okay? You know what I mean? You got the this is the road, and the train track comes across here. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to stop, okay? Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. They see the train coming, hey, I can beat that, and they try, try mm -hmm. and get up. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. a lot of people do. Someone got stuck here and died, mm -hmm. okay? And I cannot conceivably imagine how a per person can get killed in daytime by a train. You know, you, you hear about this guy was killed on the train tracks during the day. Okay. How can they? A train is a big, noisy machine. How can they not notice that it's coming? Okay? Mm -hmm. And so it's usually some idiot that thought he could race the train. Car gets halfway across, gets stuck on the line or something happens, it stops. Mm -hmm. And that train's moving fast. And it takes a while for that train to stop. It's not going to stop like your car will stop, it's going to keep going for a while. Right. So it's going to smash that car and whoever's in it. Okay? But I read it... You read they, it have, they show the stoplight away before train. Well, they, they do. They have the barrier. The, the further, further down the track, the train triggers an alarm. The alarm goes off here. Bells ring, lights okay. flash, and the barrier comes down. It's supposed to stop. But not all crossings have that. Not all crossings okay. have that. Some don't. They're just a sign. Beware of trains. Okay? Those with the barriers are usually pretty safe. It's where there's no barrier that uh, the accidents happen. Because people are being stupid, basically. That train, that driver's got no control over that train. He's doing 60, 70 K flat out. He is not going to stop that great big piece of machinery in 100 yards. No way. 
Okay? So if you're stuck on that line, goodbye. Well, sometimes it happens because I have an experience when I was young. Mm -hmm. I played chess with my brother. Actually, my mom ring the bell, uh, the house bell. Mm -hmm. I heard it, but my I was concentrated in playing chess. That's why my suit could not reach open the door. Sure. Yeah, it yeah. happened for me. Oh, yeah. sure. But my mom was really, really upset. It, it can so, happen. Yeah. If you're a person, if a person is focused on something, yeah. really focused on something, it blots out everything. Oh, it blots yeah, out everything. Right. But I heard the mm -hmm. ring bells. You heard the bell ring. Yeah, yeah. But you're more concerned about the chess. Oh, yeah, than yeah. The bell. That's why yeah. I could not uh, reach out to open the door. <laughs> yeah, I it happened to me a couple of nights yeah, yeah, ago. Yeah. I turned up to my student's house, oh. pressed the doorbell. They had, there were no cars in the driveway. There was a light on in, in the living room. So, okay, somebody's they're home, okay? Sometimes my students aren't home. They don't oh. tell me, okay? Mm -hmm. And I find out the hard way. But I go there, press the doorbell. Oh. No one came to the door. I could hear a man's voice inside yakking away. Oh. Okay. Press the doorbell again, no time. Did it about three or four times and said, screw it, and I left. Then I, halfway home, I get a text from the lady, are you coming to have a class tonight? And I said, I was at your door for ten minutes ringing the doorbell. Mm. And she said, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't hear. Okay? Mm. So, yes, it can happen. Okay? But I was not happy. I was not happy because the house was in Flatbush. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I had to drive all about the Flatbush. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't answer the doorbell. But yes, it's quite possible. You focus on something and you sort of blot out or don't pay attention to what's happening. Mm -hmm. But still, but open road on the train. But if it's close to the time, they should keep an eye on well, the they, know, they, sh they should know it's a train, a train crossing. Mm -hmm. They should know the trains cross there. That's why it's called a train crossing. And so when somebody gets ploughed under by a train, I don't have too much sympathy for them, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. To me, they're just being stupid. It's maybe it's a lot of these young people, oh, I can race this train, and the car gets stuck. It's happened not just here, overseas as well. People, I can race the train. Well, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Okay? Why is it in Korea, ghost was working to <laughs> Ghost? ghost <yeah. laughs> okay. There is ghost things. <laughs> Why some places don't have uh, barriers? I suppose money, I suppose the council. Country. The district council, whatever, whoever is responsible for that district, just for doing their job. Okay, you would think common sense would tell you put barriers on all crossings. It's usually most of the problems are this. Okay, most, most of the problems are that money. They're expensive. Not only do you have to build them, then you've got to maintain them. Pay people to go and check that they work. And that's all money. And a lot of these councils don't have a lot of money. Okay, so that's. Probably one of the reasons, but sometimes it's just sheer incompetence. Okay. Everyone know what incompetence means, right? Mm -hmm. Not good at their job. Mm -hmm. Don't do their job properly. Okay. Mm -hmm. They like to get the paycheck, but don't do the job properly. Mm -hmm. But the big this I would say this is eighty percent of the reason dollars. Okay. Money's. And things are getting more expensive, you know, every day. So city councils, if they built flash barriers for every train crossing, they would up would go rates, up would go rates, up would go local taxes. It's one big vicious circle. Okay. So the western line is slow because of level crossings of roads, and some of the eastern line stations are desolate places. What does it mean by that? Desolate places. The one at Glenlinus is just a platform with a shed, the one protected from the rain, okay, and that's your station. So who wants to stand there at 12 o'clock at midnight on a cold, wet night? Not many people. There's not many other reasons too. You're by yourself, okay? There was that Taiwanese girl. They got off the train 10 o'clock at night at Papakura, okay? She walked 50 yards and she was attacked by five people. Beaten up, punched up, spent a couple a month or so in hospital, okay? 
So they're not good places to be. They're not these wonderful, beautifully designed landscape stations that you see the architect draws. They're just a platform with a shed on it, and that's it. Okay? That is a station. Hmm? That is a station. That's your station. Oh, okay. That's your station. Oh. Some of them don't even have toilets. Oh. Okay? I know the one at Glendonis does it. Mm. If you're there and you need to go, you've got a problem. Mm. Okay? So that, that's what they're saying here. For some reason, despite electrification and new trains, it still proves unreliable too often. I saw a bus yesterday, I was driving on the road, bus was coming towards me, and the sign in front of the bus had had train replacement. Mm -hmm. So obviously a train had broken down somewhere, and it was taking passengers mm -hmm. from A to B. Okay? Uh, does anyone remember when the World Cup, Rugby World Cup was held here, 2011? No? Okay. The very World Cup, international event, the very first day, Trains broke down. They had to, the trains broke down downtown. People had to climb over trains, walk up along the rails. And this is international, at the beginning of an international mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. Some people got up to the park half an hour late, 40 minutes late. And also, I've heard that the train was packed. So jam, many people. Of course, jam, jam packed. And mm -hmm. I, I stayed at home and watched it on TV. Okay? Mm -hmm. But the people, yeah, there were masses of people. And they were, they got late. They missed the opening ceremony. They missed missed the first part of the game because the trains didn't work. Big scandal, big scandal. But in typical New Zealand fashion, nobody got blamed for anything. Okay. Maybe too many people. They carried too many people. Well, it was just bad planning. Bad planning. You have to carry too many people, but that's not the major problem. The train didn't work. The train stopped, and that would cause the problem. If it had kept going, it doesn't really matter how many people, mm -hmm. uh, it would have been okay. But the train stopped, and they had to bus everybody, or people walked. And this was the World Cup. It happened the first two nights, first two days. After that, they got their act together, okay? But really, really, reliability is the main thing. That's what people want. Buses, trains, they want reliability. Will it get run the time? You know, you've got those fancy bus signs in town, Next bus, 10 minutes. Next bus, 15 minutes. You know, yeah, sure, right. You, you believe that, okay? Yeah, and both are broke down. <laughs> yeah, it's, often. Yes. It's crazy. Bus delay, you know. Uh, I mean, it's difficult. It's easy to criticize. It's difficult to run all these things. They're machines. Machines break down. But still, okay? That's why the car will always main number one. You get in the car, and you go wherever you want, whenever you want. Very popular mayor, okay. called his vision Rapid Rail. He was the guy that wanted to have this at the very beginning. Okay. He would settle for no less when the Kirk government offered him slow rail. Kirk was the prime minister at the time and said, well, we'll give you rail, but it's going to be slow, mm -hmm. not fast. Okay. So what's the meaning generally? He, would, he is a uh, mayor Robinson. He... He would settle for less when he the means to Dove Meyer. Mayor. Mayor. Uh, Meyer. Yeah. So Dove Meyer. Mayor. He was the mayor. Yeah. Yeah, Dove Meyer. Mayor. He would settle for no less when the yeah. So Dove Meyer was saying, I want rapid rail. Mm -hmm. the Prime Minister Kirk is saying, Well, we can give you rail, but it's going to be slow rail. So Dove Meyer is saying, No, I don't want slow rail, I want oh. rapid rail. Settle for no less. Mm. Okay? It's the idea of you make a suggestion, somebody suggests something that you don't like, mm. so you say, no, I don't want that. Mm. I want what I suggested in the beginning. Mm. Okay? Settle no less for. And that's what happened here. Settle no okay. less. You understand? Okay. So he didn't accept it then? No, he didn't because accept it, and that's why we didn't have the rails, mm. don't have the trains, we got the buses. We had trams, okay, which I suppose is, I remember catching the trams. I used to live in Greyland when I was a kid, catch the tram down to the bottom of town, mm. okay. But they disappeared when I was overseas, when I went overseas, and we've just got the roads now. So, yeah, we had the opportunity 43 years ago, okay. That was 43 years ago. We've got that super rail system in by now, mm -hmm, yeah. okay. 
That was 43 years ago. The royal enthusiast, who's an enthusiast? Someone who enjoys a particular thing? If you're an enthusiast about something, you enjoy it very much. Okay? He's a rugby enthusiast. He enjoys his rugby. Watches the games, goes to the games, plays it probably, enjoys it. Okay? Yeah. So if you're an enthusiast, whatever it is you're about, you enjoy it. You enjoy doing it. You're really into it. Who's this? A petrol head. car enthusiast, enjoys working with cars, mm -hmm. drive, we're talking racing cars, not the ordinary cars, a petrol head, mm -hmm. enjoys, is a car enthusiast, mm -hmm. goes to all the speedway races, mm -hmm. messes with cars, enjoys it, okay? If you're a netball enthusiast, you love the netball, go to all the netball games, okay? So the right enthusiast, those people who love Railways, and there are a lot of people who love going for rides on train. I remember I used to catch the train from Auckland down to Wellington. Overnight trip it was quite fun. It was quite fun. Okay, uh, I didn't do, used to use some trains when I was in America. Quite good. Japan's got a very good trail, trail, train network. Okay, so the rail enthusiasts who have kept his dream alive. Keep a dream alive means keep the dream. Okay. Keep the dream. If you keep something alive, you keep it going. Okay? And especially his successor, Mr. Brown, the guy that followed. Uh, Doug Robinson. Uh, Robinson, okay, I guess Mr. Brown. Have put, a, okay, have put a stake in the ground and can take a bow. Put a stake in the ground means they started something, and to take a bow means can show that, um, accept the congratulations of the people to take a bow, okay? You've done something good, so what does a performer do at the end of a performance? Usually bow to the audience, okay? Because you've done something well. Len Brown has started this, he won't finish it, but he can say, I started it, got it going, okay? Uh, I didn't know that. I thought Doug Myers, oh, okay, that one. So the rail... Somebody had 43 years. No, it wasn't Doug Myers, wasn't Myers and uh, Robinson. I forget who the last me was before, but... Oh, it was good old, um, what's his name, the guy that had the trial? I forgot his name. Oh, I forget his name. It's not important. Okay, any questions? You have a question there? <laughs> What's she not sure? What are you not sure? <laughs> if you uh, because I'm wondering what is uh interchange of word for no less. No less. Is that word no less? No less interchange of word, yeah. Nothing other, you can say? Nothing other than. You can say uh, he would settle for nothing other than rapid rail. Other than rapid rail. Oh, so he had to he had to agree with Cook uh, government's uh, suggestion of slow rail. If he, wanted, if he wanted slow rail. Yeah, yeah. But he doesn't. Mm. So. He doesn't because uh, that means uh, uh, he, a uh, third of Maya Robinson. Mm -hmm. He wanted rapid rail. Yeah, okay. he wanted a rapid rail. He was the mayor of Auckland. So yeah. he went to the government, Kirk. Yeah. Give me some money so we can build a rapid rail mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister Kirk said, No. No. Mm -hmm. We'll give you enough money to build a slow rail yeah, service. Yeah. And Doug Robinson said, no way. I don't want that. Yeah. Well, I don't, I'm not going to have rail unless it's fast. So he, uh, we built a fast rail or slow no, rail? Nothing was done. 
oh. dropped because the city can't afford it. Oh. Auckland can't pay for this by itself. Right now, uh, John Key has pledged $2, million, $2 billion mm -hmm. from the government. Mm -hmm. Auckland City couldn't do this by itself, no way. Mm -hmm. Brochure rates would be going sky high, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and you'd be selling your house to pay your rates. They've got to get money from the government. And John Key said, okay, we'll give you $2 billion. Mm -hmm. After a lot of talk and discussion and fighting and stuff, we finally agreed. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with Dove Myers. Mm -hmm. He went to the government, they said, no, we'll give you rapid rail, uh, slow rail, and Dove Myers said, no, I want rapid rail. Because mm -hmm. if you get slow rail, then you've got to upgrade it to rapid later on. Mm -hmm. So why waste the money? Mm -hmm. Have why not have rapid rail mm -hmm. to begin with? Mm -hmm. So he said, no, we're going to have no rail at all. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened. Oh. And that's what's happened. We've had none at all mm -hmm. until now, until they're starting now. Mm -hmm. okay? Okay. So you could say nothing other than that. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. Everyone, you want, most, most immigrants come to New Zealand because they want nothing other than a peaceful life. They don't want to be bombed and shot at or persecuted. Mm -hmm. So they want nothing other than a peaceful life. Mm -hmm. They only want a peaceful life. Mm -hmm. Sort of like a contradiction, mm -hmm. double negative. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And as now, government were hard to convince and the bridge had to be financed by tractors. So what's the meaning as now? By, but then, as now means continue, seems like a continuous sentence from but, the past to now. But then, yeah. back in Dub Meyer's time, yeah. okay, governments had to be convinced, hard to convince. Yeah. And like I said earlier, just after the war, governments don't have a heck of a lot of money. Oh, no, I'm asking you about as now. As now, what's the meaning? As now, as meaning now. right now. That's why I feel like this sentence. The government, the government. Continue sentence. Yeah. Continue what, what sentence the, what, from the past until now. I think what, just, what happened was the government, when Mayor Brown initially mentioned this, mm -hmm. the government said, no way. Mm -hmm. We've got no money. Mm -hmm. We can't afford it. Yeah. As then, back in the Myers' time. Mm -hmm. Then, for some reason, after a couple of years of wrangling and wheeling and dealing, mm -hmm. the government finally said, okay. We'll give you two billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's the same situation. Only this time mm -hmm. the government said yes. Okay. We'll give you the money mm -hmm. and go ahead. Mm -hmm. But if you read the paper this morning, New Zealand owns owes New Zealand has a national debt of half a trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. You look at the Herald this morning, it's in there right up there. Four hundred and fifty eight thousand million something dollars. The New Zealand government borrows $250 million every week mm -hmm. to run the country, okay? Mm -hmm. And now the national debt is so 400 and something, I think it was 458 blah, 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 trillion, almost a trillion dollars, okay? Almost a trillion dollars, half, half a trillion dollars. Who lent those money? Well, banks from all over the world, in Australia, New Zealand, overseas, banks, that's why when they have banks collapse overseas, it can affect here, because that's where they get their money from, okay? So, governments borrow money, that's normal, that's accepted, okay? Uh, but when, so, when, remember that financial crisis a few years ago? Morgan, JP Morgan, whatever it was, went bust or whatever. Uh, the banks were failing, because they couldn't pay the debts that they owed the other banks, and just went all the way down, all the way down, okay? Yeah, governments borrow from other governments, from other countries, that's normal. Okay? But we owe, New Zealand owes whoever nearly half a trillion dollars. And is a uh, bigger amount than Korea? Than Korea? I, would, I have no idea. I don't know what the economy is like in Korea. Okay? I think it's reasonably good. Uh, Shipbuilding and stuff like that. When I was in Poha, we were building ships left, right, and centre. Okay? So. Uh, that makes plenty of money for them. Now, New Zealand, we depend a lot. We're far away from everything. So that costs a lot, you know, moving goods back and forth. And that affects the government, you know, spending and stuff like that. Mm. We're in a small country, 4 million, 4.2 million people. We don't have any heavy industry, no big major factories or anything like that. Mm. It's all light industry, primarily agriculture. If the milk market was to collapse, 
so would New Zealand. Fonterra, we get 30% of New Zealand's income comes from Fonterra, dairy products. Okay? That's one third of what we the country needs. It comes from one group. One group. If they go under, big trouble. Big trouble. Okay? And you read in the papers and hear on the news every day, this company's gone out of business, 200 lose their job. This company's gone out of business, pretty lose their job. Uh, no, it's, it's hard. It's tough. So, and they're still asking questions, where's the government going to get this $2 billion? Okay? Where are they going to get the $2 billion? Borrow it. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're going to have to borrow it. Or raise taxes. Or, I'm sure the city will probably raise rates. They've already done it once, so they'll probably do it again. Okay? I the government already has the money. <laughs> governments <laughs> never, very few governments op operate in a surplus. Uh, the oil, oil countries might, okay, Saudi Arabia and all those places, but the regular governments, even America, even America. Just a year or so ago, the federal government was running out of money. They had to pass a new law so they could raise the national debt in America. Okay? And, and it was what affected me because they were talking about stopping Social Security, stopping stuff like that, because the government didn't have the money to pay for those things. Mm -hmm. But they passed the law and, mm -hmm. and everything. They raised the debt level, not stop the debt, raise the level so they could borrow more. Okay? And governments do that all the time. They do it all the time. Okay? Can't pay this one, so we'll just increase the debt. It goes on and on and on and on. And so we're a small country and we owe half a trillion dollars to whomever. Okay? So what country has no debt at all? <laughs> no, you know, the oil countries, oh, oil. Saudi Arabia, oh, okay. Iran, all those countries that produce oil, because that's where they make their money. Well, Iran is a poor country. Yeah. It's, Iran is a very poor country. It's a poor country because yeah. the money's not distributed evenly. Okay. okay, the money comes into the country and it goes to the goes to the bosses, goes to the government, mm. and some countries share it with the people. Saudi Arabia does to a certain mm. extent. Mm. Iran doesn't. Mm. The government takes it. And they buy weapons and spend the money on nuclear uh, and research and stuff like that instead of feeding some villages. Mm -hmm. Same thing's happening here. Maori are getting they are millions of dollars land settlements, yet they're all living. Most of them are living in poverty. Okay, where's all that money going? Main Maori, the elders, the leaders, they're starting businesses and stuff like that, and it's not going down to the people that really need it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It, it's, some organizations have started that, but generally it's not, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, it's a Maori lady with no kids, with a dozen kids, no money, yet her tribe has got $150 million from the government. Mm -hmm. why, is, why is she like that? Why is she like that? It's just where the governments want to spend the money, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. so the, the Maori people's waiting on the salvation army is not willing to Mm -hmm. Very big wedding, and then all the traditional dress and it might cost a lot, but famous like a high tribes. But weddings, or... people. When it comes to a wedding, generally people don't care about the cost. Okay, my daughter or my son's getting married. Screw the cost. We'll pay it later. To pay. <laughs> <laughs> pay it later. <laughs> and I'm sure when you guys got married, if you did, uh, I'm sure your parents felt the same way. Dads hate weddings, okay? Because dads think, oh, my daughter's getting married. Mum, oh, wonderful, wonderful. Dad, how am I going to pay? How am I going to pay? Right. Hmm? Where's the money going to come from? sit down and plan it together. <laughs> how? Well, they do sometimes. It's just a tradition. Dear old dad worries about the money. Mum thinks it's a glorious event. Her daughter's getting married. Her son's getting married. Yeah, it was hmm? huge wedding, and their dress is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Never seen all the traditional dresses yeah. like that. Very colorful and very, oh, very, very colorful. important. Are you sure it's Maori and not Samoan? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, it could be Samoan. Samoans dress up, they really dress up for weddings and special occasions. It's oh. even going to church. Uh, I, I pass by the Samoan church on my way up to my classes on Sunday morning and I see them all dressed up in their nice Samoan outfits and everything. They look really nice. Really colourful, really bright. 
so made into marks. I Maori yes, they usually wear the suit and stuff. I don't know. Oh, don't go to Maori weddings anyway. Well, oh, this article mentioned about uh, Albert Street and the Kelo. Mm -hmm. I'm really wondering that two uh, kind of that uh, inner city roads has enough space for building. Or that's the big problem. That's no. one. That's one of the big problems There's they're no talking about. <laughs> they were they were talking about putting the railway line through Dominion Road, just yeah, the next yeah. road down. Yeah, yeah. That road's congested. It's one of the busiest roads in Auckland. Oh. Put a railway line on it. It's only one lane each way. Then you put a railway line in the middle. What the hell? It's going to be chaos, okay? Mm. So that's you're right. That's the problem. We don't have the great big wide streets, the wide areas, mm. like these other cities mm. do, like Tokyo and London and Seoul and all those places. That's why they go underground. To go under, and that's why this one is going underground. Yeah, it has to be underground. Has, has to go underground. Mm. But then we've got a w problem, we're close to the water. Mm. So the water level is quite high. Mm. So the tunnel can't be too deep. Okay? If you're inland, sure, you can go down quite deep. And when I was in Russia, I travelled on their uh, subways. Really great. You go down and down and down. And mm. then, yeah, yeah, you can't do that. Because the water table, the, the level of the water is quite high. If they go down too far, they're gonna, it's going to flood. It's going to flood. Mm. So they're going to go under, but not too far under. Mm. But so they are talking about subway, actually? Well, no, underground rail link. I don't know if it's a subway. Under, underground railroad link. So to me, railroad is trains on a track, uh, which is the subway, I suppose the subway. But it's underground, so it's got to be... It's got to be a subway, I guess. Oh, okay. okay. Mm. So. to be subway. <laughs> uh, oh. That's the way most cities operate now. Most cities have subways. Mm. They can be confusing. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, we don't have. Excuse me. We don't have a lot of room. That's one of the main problems. Mm -hmm. A lot of land mm -hmm. in the in the city area. Mm -hmm. Outside the city, sure, plenty of land, mm -hmm. but not in the city area. Mm -hmm. And that's why our houses go out. That's why we've got all those new areas like Flatbush and Dunnymore and all those places because mm -hmm. there's plenty of land there and they can build mm -hmm. more houses. Mm -hmm. But in the city we have to go up mm -hmm. apartments, mm -hmm. go up in the apartments, mm -hmm. terrace houses, mm -hmm. okay? Um, which I think I don't like. I don't like terrace houses, okay? But just a glorified apartment. And why pay almost the same price for a, an apartment that you would pay for a house, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you've got bad neighbours on either side, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. You're stuck. You can't do anything, really. Mm -hmm. They own their section, they own their section, okay? And you're stuck in the middle. They could be noisy, they could be partying every night. What do you do? You can't do much, okay? So, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. But, maybe five, ten years from now, I, I don't know how long it'll take. I think they're looking at 2020 or 2018, something like that, mm -hmm. maybe longer. I may still be around to see it. I'm sure you guys will be, okay? Your kids certainly will be. May use it. Okay. But that's that's the plan. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, well that's it. Oh, thank you. James.